Welcome to another episode of What Does That Do? The show where we take a look at obfuscated code and break it down to find out what it does do. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at color choices and how they might not just be ugly to look at, they might actually be bad for your site. Here we have a set of 46 colors that are all rather somber looking and mostly shades of gray, a couple of purples, and some browns, some blues. All of these came from a JavaScript injection that was found in a website. Here we have the code with the colors for both div and CSS, supposedly, along with an array of supposed CSS indices, a color picker, and then some more manipulation and a function to check the quote-unquote div styles. From a brief look, this doesn't look too bad. I mean, after all, how bad can colors be? And looking at these, you might just assume that it's questionable design choices. If we take a closer look at what this code is actually doing, we'll see that what we have is actually a malicious script. The first thing we have is a check to see if def co def's colors is defined. In other words, if this has been run already. If it hasn't been run, we define def's colors, so it only runs once, and then we define three arrays, the two with colors and this array of just simple numbers, and then we create a new array here with 10 elements in them, and then we take this function, div pick colors, and we pass it in the array of CSS colors here. Now, div pick colors is just going through the list of colors itself one by one and converting them from the string with the pound sign in front of it into separate two character hex codes. We can see that here where we're defining a new empty string and then looping over each of the elements in the past array. And here the interior loop is going simply from one to seven, and we're getting the substring of the color starting from the position in the interior loop and getting two bytes. If the substring is not simply two zeros, we convert the value from base 16 to decimal and then subtract 15. So for example, here we have 2f8281. 2f is converted to 47, minus 15 is 32, which is a space and so on. Now, that gets set to var s, and then c here, var c, is just a reference to the CSS indices. The next thing that the code does is set the first element of this empty array to the returned value of the conversion for div colors here. And then lastly, what this does is go through the indices, pulling out and reconstructing different values in the array, and then setting CT0 to itself again. And then the last thing that happens is the code goes in and looks for elements based on the index from the CT array, grabbing the first one. If it is there, it retrieves the element again, creates a new element, sets up the display style and attributes, appends it, and then creates another one and does the same thing. If that fails, it simply writes out three other values that are concatenated together and then sets a timeout again to repeatedly do that every 500 milliseconds. So to get an idea of what these values actually turn into, what we can do is take a look at this slightly modified debug version where the only thing I've done is log each of the entries here that gets constructed in div pick colors. So we can actually just do console log bin carriage return between them. And then at the end here, the actual functional element creation is ignored. And then what we can also do here is for i equals zero, i less than ct dot length, i plus plus console dot log ct i plus carriage return. And now if we run this through node, what we can see is the first element or ct zero is actually this string here with this URL here. Additionally, there is this string with body div display, none, iframe, some more div information, an iframe construct, and a URL query. And then we see it broken out into what each of the CT elements are. In the end, what we have here in check div styles is that the code is looking for CT1, which is a body, getting the first element, creating 
a new div, C, which is CT2, setting the display to none, which is CT4, setting the attribute directly for display none, and appending that, and then creating a new element, an iframe, with the source being this URL, and again, setting an attribute, the source is CT0, and appending that. And if it doesn't work, the catch will write out CT6, CT0, and CT7 to construct the exact same iframe. So if you're wondering how this can be detected, as you can see right now, ClamAV does not detect this snippet of JavaScript as being malicious. However, we could very easily write our own signature for this in order to make ClamAV detect it. And the way that we would do that is by leaving the temps, setting the tempter to the current directory, Running it with debug, we can sort of ignore all of the debug messages here. We're really only interested in this directory. And if we look in here, we see that there's a no comment file, a no tags file, and the JavaScript file. If we look here, no comment is just minimized. JavaScript is similarly minimized, but the important difference here is that it removes the dependence on variable names. So here we have the script tag. Instead of defs colors, it's just n0 and then n1, n2, n3, so on throughout the code. So if we were to take sigtool hex dump, so now we're in interactive mode for sigtool, we can take all of this here, put it into the interactive sigtool, and we can take our hex encoded text here, and we don't want the 0a at the end because that's the new line that we use to enter it. We see that this is matching on ASCII text and specifically HTML. So we'll make this a body-based signature. So my sig anti-color 2201116-0. We will target this at any file at any offset, and we can take this and put that there. And now what we want is just to go and continue grabbing additional strings here and converting them to hex. So in this case, it is. So we need to set the offset down to be able to grab here. So we can say that that's, you know, we have how many colors? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17 colors here. Each of them are seven characters long, so that's a little bit more than 100 characters. But hex-encoded characters can include extra information on them. They can be six or eight characters long, so we can say, let's call this 250 characters to the next set, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15, 25, another 29. So 29 times 7 is about 200 or 300 is probably a good range there to get us down to here. And now as long as the colors of the first two arrays, this signature should work just fine. And then what we can do is literally grab this entire function. He throw that through hex dump. And if we give this another 250 characters, we now have a reasonable body-based signature. And just to give you an idea of what that looks like here, we have the definition and we can see the wild cards in place here and, and here and here. And since this doesn't care about the order of the arrays, this is probably a pretty good signature to catch this kind of suspicious behavior. We can, of course, enhance this by grabbing the function down here where we're actually appending the child to the existing page. So let's do that. And this is, we'll just call it 500 characters there. And then we can see that this has expanded the signature. And now if we, if we scan this again, we now detect this as my sig anti-color unofficial, which is great. If we wanted to say, make this a little bit more robust, we could create a logical signature in ClamAV, and we would do that by lsig anti-color 2022.0116-0. We use semicolons to delimit the fields here. We can, again, target zero, and now we have to create a set of logical expressions here for now, we'll just say zero, so the first logical subsignature needs to be true. And now we can get to creating these subsignatures. We can start off with something very basic like this, checking to see if there's a type of for a variable that's undefined and then setting it to a one. But we all know that that's going to create a lot of false positives. 
So the next thing that we can do is we can go and get var01 being a new array, and then we can do a quote and a hash. So 22, 23, and this is where we're going to get creative. We can say six to eight characters followed by a quote and a comma. So now we have three subsignatures here so far. We have the initial one that's checking if it's undefined. We have the array creation, and we have something that'll match quoted hex encoded colors. And then the next thing we can do is look for if n, that will tell us that we have a new variable followed by how many characters are we looking for here? JavaScript normalization will make three characters. So we can look for three characters there and be pretty confident we'll find everything. Followed by the not equals zero zero and another start of a normalized variable. Then three again plus equals string car code three again. So that'll be another subsignature there. And then if we go and grab this function here, we really can just say this call with the n. And now we have a good representation of this function where we're appending the HTML contents there. And now what we can do is then also look for an else set timeout. And now if we look at the logical signature, we can do zero and one and two and three, four, five. And we can see here the different strings that we have. Now this is only going to look for the presence of this signature and this signature and this signature, as well as the presence of this signature here where we're doing the from car code and the element creation along with the timeout. If we want to make this a little bit more robust, what we can do is we can put in some checks to see that we have a certain number of these signatures that need to match. So for instance, we can say that we have the first element and that we have at least two arrays and that the colors that we have, say a, a good number here would be greater than say 20. So if we have more than 20 colors being defined and we have two arrays along with all of the rest of this, that should be a good indicator that this is a rather suspicious signature. And now let's move our original file out of the way so that way it won't detect this. And let's see if our logical signature functions the way that we expected. So here we have it loading all of those signatures. It did not work the way I expected. So it's not working because here we have N001 in the signature. So let's go fix that there. Now we will not have to worry about that. Now we can say that we have more than two arrays and more than 20 colors. And this should work now. And now we have a logical signature that's a little bit less likely to generate false positives than if we didn't have those counts in the signature. And it's a little more flexible than the body-based signature that we had created. There you have it. Hopefully this gives you some insight into how this color encoded JavaScript malware works and how to create some rules and signatures uh, in ClamAV to detect this. If you're interested in more ClamAV videos, check out my playlist uh, for ClamAV tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you found it interesting or helpful. Press subscribe if you want to be notified when a new video goes live. And leave a comment if you have a question or feedback. See you next time.